Are you an absolute beginner looking to start your ballet journey? Well, you've come to the right place. At BWI, we are all about the details. We will be focusing on everything you need to know with your foundations of ballet and focusing on the bar. The bar is critical. It's where we build the foundations before we leap into the center. There's no point rushing the foundations as we know. Too many classes worldwide rush these foundations, be it in vocational schools or in the dropping classes. You miss the details and then you progress to the more advanced classes because we think we know what we're doing. And then you get there and you wonder why you're struggling. You wonder why you feel weaker. You wonder why your form isn't there. It's because the details and the foundations of your training wasn't laid. And so here with this absolute beginner course, we need to start you off right. We need to start you off from scratch, learning everything you need to know from posture, how to plie, tendu, jete, exactly what to feel in your muscles, exactly the imagery we need to feel, because I want to set you up for life. I want to set up your training so you can progress further and further with no technical issues. And this is why I put together this eight week absolute beginner course. Let's train together. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, click that subscribe button so you never miss another video. Guys, today we're doing something really fun for me. We're looking at the variation from Le Corsair, the Jardin Anime Medora variation, which for me um, is very special because I did this for my graduation year. And again, quite a surreal experience for me because I used to watch Altenay Silmaratova do this variation to then be not only rehearsed by her, but then to do the variation on the Marinsky stage myself um, 10 years later. Um, it's kind of crazy, but a real special moment for me. And I learned so much from watching her do the variation, getting her feedback, getting my teacher's feedback, watching other ballerinas do it. And today we'll be watching Maria Khodova do, do this variation. Now there's many key moments in this variation, um, such as when you glissade at the beginning, we have to be looking front when we glissade. When we do the frog jump, it's imperative that we arrive in the jump, in the air, so we see two knees up before we then come down. A lot of people make this mistake and treat the musicality of going into the jump the same. So you get glee, sad, leg, leg, and by the time the other leg's up, we're already down. So we don't get that beautiful floating sensation. We'll talk about this more all in a moment. Another thing that I discovered when I was doing it on the Marinsky stage was the very final balanese on point, which you, usually the audience will get involved in and clap. Um, the first time I did it on the stage, in the rehearsal, I only got halfway down the stage because again, I didn't realize and didn't have the experience of taking up that much space, taking up that much room. So Alt and I was rehearsing me and she was like, ah, Isabella, you must, you have to get down to the very edge of the stage, hello. And I was like, ah, okay. And then she said, you know, your, your leg must be like a knife as well, whilst the upper body is relaxed, which is why I adore watching, um, watching the version that she does, which I cannot for the life of me find on YouTube. If anyone knows where that is, please let me know. I found it once before and then now it's no longer in my history. So I'm thinking, has it been taken down? But her leg is the sharpest I've seen. Da -da -da -yum. Pum, pum. Her leg is so strong, so sharp, and I think you can see that Maria's is not quite sharp in this. She does the rest of the variation extremely beautifully, but I think that moment needs to be sharper. Um, but Altenai manages to give that dynamic energy whilst being so soft on top, which is what I really try to do in the variation myself. And so gaining the skill of covering the ground as well is key. Um, it's basically like every time you balanet, you travel a little bit, every time you land, you travel a little bit. And being able to do that whilst you keep the shoulders down and gaining and sustaining the control is uh, the difficult part. But essentially, you know, this variation is deemed as um, an easier variation, but the music is just so luxurious and glamorous and lustrous. Um, it's a very beautiful variation to dance and it can just look okay if people don't use their head enough, if people don't um, really get the legs there in one and if people are stiff in the arms then it can look, you know, like anything, not very good. Um, and so while watching Maria today we will be talking through the technicalities and the 
the technique and how to achieve both the softness and also the lightness and the flight um, illusion in the jumps. So let's get started. Beautiful presence. Really nice use of head. Now some people do arabesque on, um, sorry, um, pico turns on this. She, Maria does a nice attitude. You can see how, very nice, you can see how difficult it is to travel those last hops. And now looking, watching how Maria does it, she's, uh, you know, very soft and very beautiful. Um, but I can see how she approaches the variation kind of very soft and throughout it. Like for me, for example, it's also down to personality, right? So for me, I have quite a strong personality and I really enjoy dynamic um, and so on the step step attitude you know Maria does it beautiful beautifully soft and I, I would just add a little bit more accent to it um, along with the sharpness of the leg at the end um, I believe Alton I does it a lot sharper very much so so that there is a hold between each one and you'll notice how Maria goes a little bit sort of up and down almost straight away but the beginning section that Maria does is is very very um, beautiful and let's let's watch it again this time I'm going to dissect it a little bit more so she has a nice accent now watch as she does this glissade and um, this is really key so she does the glissade right and the glissade needs to act almost like a bit of a run you know because if you do a glissade just kind of going up um, we're not going to cover much ground either. We need to get down to the the edge of the Marinsky stage here. So you need to kind of really take up some room. Notice how you always look front. Look to the audience when you glissade. You never want to look in the direction you're going to jump most of the time because most of what we're taught in school is we have to address the front when we glissade. And then we look to where we're going when we're actually executing the movement itself. So for example here, she'll do glissade and then she'll jump and move her head. Now, as we go into the jump, notice how she arrives in this frog type position immediately and very um, str um, straight away. So she'll bat on this leg really high. Her leg will go down while she's in the air so that when she lands, we get a beautiful accent. So she goes up, right? And now look, we found this beautiful frog position in the air. Now that's really key so you, you have this beautiful floating sensation. Now, that's required to bring the second leg up really quick. It's not even, it's not ta da 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 pam because if you do it evenly, then by the time that leg's arrived, that leg will be down. So you need to treat it as ta da 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 So almost like as soon as that leg envelops, the other one leaves the floor. So then you see that and then you come down, which is what Maria's doing super well. Now the head will be down, so now as she extends, she'll arrive with the, the leg and the head at the same time. Now, one thing that can happen is as you land, the back leg will drop and then lift, which we don't want. Maria does it well, you'll see. Look, her leg even goes higher at the back, so her hamstring is super engaged, you know, toe to sitting bone. She'll land. Notice how her, how her hamstring is remaining engaged. So that back leg is not dropping 
which can easily happen. So you've got to, and these are all the things I would think about because as I was rehearsing, I realized that's what I was doing. And so I would squeeze the knee and squeeze it as I was landing. So that then she's landing in this beautiful high retire. You feel solid now. She's held in this position. Her back leg is nice and turned out. Then all you need to do is extend, right? And lift the chin at the same time, showing accent. Very important to land on a beautiful turned out supporting leg. We don't want to land turned in. If you land turned in, you'll be unstable. Then she'll use her head to bring the arm up a little bit before her arm will arrive. And then she arrives there and holds. Beautiful position. Really nice elbow, nice and wide. She'll extend and roll through the foot. Looking to the front again, we repeat, glissade, looking front, a bit like a run, you see. She's running down the diagonal. And now, once again, this jump will go straight up. Payam, head down, finding that position. Toe really high to the city moan. Hold that hamstring as you lower. Do not let it drop. Extend and lift, exactly like this. Up, head down. Really important to get the coordination of the head down so then you can extend and show that beautiful pose. And head's even higher there for more accent. She does that very seamlessly. And when you run, it's really beautiful to run and look at the audience as you run and take your time, take it all in, take in that magical theater. And then using upper body. Now here she does an attitude turn, which is completely fine. Um, lots of people, like for example, I just did the very original da da pique turn ya da da ram bam four times, um, but fancier versions do the attitude, and it's nice because she sails around, sails around with the the chest up, chest up, looking up to the ceiling, opens the chest, and her steps allow her to step backwards and gather space. It's also quite nice because it's not it's not necessarily a stressful pirouette, you know. Obviously, when you're at this level, you're technically strong and you can do attitude and kind of tombe backwards, tombe backwards a little bit to take up space. So there's not that kind of it's not as stressful as doing an attitude turn in Giselle, for example, where you have to sit and finish on your leg, you know. So it's, it's a nice feeling attitude. Now, notice here she's she gives it soft quality, right? So it's not so dynamic where it's da da yum, whereas I gave the more um, stronger dynamic just because the music um, makes me feel that way. But she does it softly. So, you know, it's sort of like the arms continue a little bit. She takes in the audience, long legs in front of her, accent with the heart, arm and head which is very nice, you know, using your head and your hands, your hands and wrists are relaxed, and then you extend the fingers, bam, looking over. I mean, it's just so, you know, luxurious. Now here, for me, I would want this um, sharper, you know, because you must watch Altanai Samratova. Guys, if you find the link of Altanai Samratova doing this variation, send it to me, I had it, and then I didn't record this video, um, for a while and I went back to search for it and I literally can't find it anywhere on YouTube. I don't know if it's been removed, but if you find it, please let me know because I really, I really want to watch it. Anyway, so then here, it, sh it should be like a knife stabbing the air whilst the arms are beautifully soft. It's not quite sharp enough, like there's not really a hold, right? She's also moving her arms a lot, like there's loads of, a lot of changes of arms, which not necessarily needed. I mean, it's very nice, very beautiful. Like, but I, I, I think the the legs need to be a little bit sharper, a little bit stronger, which also will give con more contrast to her soft quality in the upper body as well. So, as you can see, the beginning section is um, one of the most important sections. You know, so you must work on the glissade almost like a run in run to fourth and then you have to pick your feet up as fast as possible feeling like i always used to think i was like squeezing a lemon behind my uh, knee in my hamstring so up and then really maintaining that but you've got to show the frog pose when it doesn't look good on people is when they go ta da da dum and they're already coming down it's like there's no suspension there's no lift there's no sense of flight 
um, which is what you want to see in this variation, along with if if people don't use their head in those moments. Ta da da da, ba yum, ba da 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 da, ta da da yum, ba da. You know, like makes such a big difference using your head. And yes, it can feel a little bit difficult, especially if you're not used to it. Um, but I stress how, what a difference it makes. And it makes you look so much more mature, artistic and professional. So we want to do that. So one of my most favorite variations. Let's watch it one more time. And then we can start to see the application of everything that I've um, spoken about. I will also talk through this one. So you come on. Prepare, look to the audience. Keep your eyes front. Lift the second leg quickly and hold that hamstring. Look how she holds it. You know, we see that suspension in the air. Long legs. Opens the chest and then allows herself to tombe backwards. Nice. Her arms will be nice and slow now. Continue. Her wrist, you know, is the last thing to get there. And now, what we want is this a little bit stronger so you see more hold. More sharpness. Just more sharpness would be good. And maybe slightly less arm movements. But the audience will always clap during this. And nice finish. Notice how she uses the elbows as well at the end. Elbows and then lift. You know, you must always arrive arms and then releve. Really beautiful. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you enjoy these technical breakdowns. What I've been doing mostly is looking at the artistic side of things and more um, about the artistic side of the variations and why they're so good. I mean, I love doing that anyway. I'll keep doing that too. But do let me know if you enjoy looking and breaking down the technical side of things because, as we know, I love to break stuff down and make it make sense and understandable. If you follow me on Instagram, you guys know this. Um, so let me know if you want me to do any more variations. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're working hard and improving. And I'm sure you're progressing. Keep going. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye for now. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video, you're really going to enjoy my BWI platform. Try it for 14 days, absolutely free. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, we have everything you'll need to succeed. We have classes, courses, which are in-depth lessons, plans, as well as bespoke plans, whether you're struggling with organization and you just really need to know exactly what to do. Maybe you watch endless videos on YouTube, but you don't even know if the level you're watching is catered to you. Well, that's where BWI comes in. Try it for 14 days and you won't regret it.